What's up guys? Welcome to the first ever TTG news show. Not sure if I'm really going to call it that, but that's what it's called for now. In this weekly video, I'll be telling you guys all the news that happened in triathlon in the past week. Today I'm kind of going to cheat since a lot of cool stuff happened two weeks ago in the IQ Grand Final, so I'll give you guys a quick rundown of that and then I'll continue on with the news for this past week. So today we're going to start off with the ITU Grand Final. Of course, this race had a crazy finish for the men with the Alistair and Jonathan Brownlee finish there. Of course, I made a video about that. If you want to check it out, I'll link it right up here. So basically, Jonathan Brownlee was in the lead for basically the whole run of the race, but managed to somehow screw up his pacing or whatever and he started basically falling over couldn't finish the race about 400 meters from the end his brother Alistair picked him up and helped him finish so Jonathan ended up finishing the race but Henry Schumann ended up passing both of those guys and getting first place so overall we have Henry Schumann in first Jonathan Brownlee second and Alistair in third place so of course after this race the champion for the whole season is announced so at first place we had Mario Mola from Spain and then we had Fernando Alarza also from Spain and then Jonathan Brownlee managed to get third place overall for the whole season so still a great season for him even though the last race did not end probably as he wanted to. For the women ITU Grand Final the finish was a little bit less interesting but basically we have Flora Duffy for first place, Gwen Jorgensen for second and Charla McShane in third. For the overall season we have Flora Duffy in first, Jody Simpson in second and Gwen Jorgensen in third. So that concludes the news that I'm a bit late on. Now we're going to move over to some news that happened this week. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Diamondback Andean, the crazy bike that just came out. I made a pretty successful video about that if you want to check it out. And basically it's a new kind of time trial slash triathlon bike that is supposed to be way more aerodynamic and just crazy, looks crazy, and just a really radical and new design. So of course I subscribe to the Diamondback channel. It's actually pretty boring, I wouldn't really recommend it. But they came out with a new video that was just question and answers about their first video about the Diamondback Andean, where basically the designer and like some other pretty important guy were answering questions about the bike. So I'll link that down below if you guys wanna check it out. Basically the main points that they talked about was that people were really wondering and kind of thinking that the bike was gonna be really bad in crosswinds, but they actually kind of set that rumor to rest since most newer triathlon bikes actually do have quite a big um, frame where the side profile, it looks like it would really act like a sail and take the wind. So their bike really is not very different. And now that I'm looking at it and comparing with other bikes like the felt frame, they really look very similar. It's basically just that bottom part by the wheel. But what they explained in the video is that the bottom part really won't have very much of an effect since the most of the leverage is up by your head and in the middle of the frame, but down by the ground, that's not really gonna get a great push from the wind as well as the most wind that you really feel is on the steering axis. So that'd be having really deep dish rims and whatever, a fork that's really wide. But here, most of the difference compared to other bikes that are totally fine in crosswinds, um, it's basically just that bottom part, which actually doesn't really have much of an effect. So if you're interested in more stuff about the Diamondback Andean, you can check out my video and also the question and answer video that I'll put in the description down below. Now here is some huge news that I just saw on Twitter not very long ago and that is now they finally have triathlon emojis for women. So for a long time you always had the little guy biking, swimming and running but they didn't have a female version of that so I'm sure a lot of girls were really sad that you know they couldn't accurately represent when they're doing triathlon. So now they have a girl running, biking and swimming. So there you go. Hope you guys will get some good use out of those emojis. So of course Ironman Kona 2016 is coming up soon and I found this really cool ratings report that basically talks about what are the predictions, what happened last year, what happened in the past few years and who it predicts will win the race. So this whole thing is done by a guy called Thorksten Raddy? Ra I have it written down here. Raddy. Anyways, no clue how to pronounce his name, but he basically tried to predict who's gonna win 
Kona, he has like the whole list of athletes and what position they think they're going to be in. So I'll just give you guys the top three for the men and women, just so you have a bit of an idea. But I'll put that in the link down below if you guys want to check it out too. It's actually pretty interesting. I didn't read through the whole thing. It's actually really long. The guy went into super great detail to what he's looking into and to um, how he decides who's winning everything. So for the men, he predicted that Jan Ferdino would be in first place. Sebastian Kinley in second. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but let me know. And Andreas Raylert in third. So I have no clue how good this guy is at predicting stuff, but we'll see what happens. For the women, we have Daniela Riff in first, Mirinda Carfrey in second, and Jody Swallow in third. I'm sure I'm saying all these names like totally wrong, so be sure to comment down below and just tell me how bad I am. Uh, pronouncing stuff. For some more ITU races, we had the 2016 Salinas World Cup, which uh, just recently happened. For the women's race, we had Kristen Casper from the USA who got first place. I believe that's her first gold medal, so good job to you. I'm sure you're not watching, but way to go. In second place, we had Summer Cook who was also from the US, and she still is from the US, unless she just changed her nationality. And then we had Jillian Sanders. For the men, we had David Castro Fajardo, or Fajardo, I'm pretty sure it's Fajardo. I took Spanish, but ugh, don't wanna say it wrong. Anyways, he got first place, and I believe that was the first time he also got first place, so good job to those two. And in second place, we had Matthew McElroy from the United States, and Chris Santo Grajales from Mexico, who got third. On September 24th, it was the ITU Long Distance World Championship. So the winners for that race were Jody Swallow from Great Britain, and for the men's was Sylvain Sudry from France. So way to go for them. I bet you guys didn't know I spoke French, eh? For the men, the top two were actually both from France. We had Sylvain Sudry and also Cyril Vierno. Yeah, no. And also in third place, we had Matt Crabbit from the United States. Of course, for the women, we had Jody Swallow in first place, Carolyn Steffen from Switzerland, or oh, I almost said Sweden there, no, Switzerland, who got second place, and a Canadian, Rachel McBride, got third place. Way to go. So there you go. That's the ITU Long Distance World Championships 2016. So that's all the news I have for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to leave comments down below for anything I could improve. Of course, this is the first time I ever do this new show. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know if it was too short, if it was too long. Comment all that stuff down below. Thanks for watching, guys. And remember to never stop trying.